Countries scaled by oldest cities. We have Italy. Let's look into the sands of time. I would imagine Italy's got to be pretty old. Greece as well. There's definitely going to be a couple of Middle Eastern country balls with some very old cities. Turkey, maybe, would be the oldest? Oh, Japan. I should forget about Japan. That's a true monument. Was it always called Kyoto? Nope. Uh, when it was founded in 794 AD, it was called... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. It's now a 1,200 years old, basically. Uh, that didn't make me grow. How old... I, I was going to say, that's really not that old compared to some other ones. Italy, what about Rome? So that's over 2,000 years old, right? Like 2,500, 2,200? Uh, when we officially united as a country, uh, but it takes the title for one of the oldest... Continually occupied cities in Europe. That's an interesting way to phrase it. Do tell more. Sure. Because of that, Rome has become known as the Eternal City. It's now around 2,700 years old. I said 2,500. Wow, look at it. Look at these other ones we still have to go. Okay, taking capital cities. Speaking of, wait. Everyone has heard of Athens, right? Sure. What about it? It's been our leading city for nearly 2,500 years. And it's older than that, too? Oh, yeah. Athens has been cited as the cradle of Western civilization. Society. Why, they, why am I adding words? And mythology. Hey there, neighbor, says Lebanon. Don't forget, uh, bi Biblios? Biblos? Biblios? What the? Why, why am I speaking Spanish right now? Uh, never go back. Thanks for... Yes. Okay, no worries. Okay, I want to know how big the balls are going to go. Uh, we've been your trading partner for eons. It wasn't originally called that, though, right? Yeah. It was founded as... Oh, by the Phoenicians. I'm going to stop pronouncing everything for the rest of this video, just because that, so, that was so smooth brain of me. Uh, oh, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, they share their 7,000 years history. Exactly. Interesting. I didn't know any of that. What a team. Ha ha. Look at those youngsters over there. I know, right? I'm trying to think, what is the oldest city on Earth? It's over 3,000. Oh, oh, what about Egypt? Does Egypt have a city? Okay, anyways, uh, by a millennia? Okay, so I need to pay more attention. I don't see any more shadows, so I don't know if I see an Egypt. Roughly how old is Damascus? About 10,000 years old. Yeah, there's no Egypt here. Nice. What's your city? Jericho. It's home to several important religious sites, like the Tomb of Moses, the Mount of Temptation. Wow. Jericho is believed to be the oldest city in the world at 11,000 years. That's 9,000 BC. That is absolutely insane. I would have never guessed that number. I thought the most we'd get to was about like 3,500 years old. US News actually has Bulgaria with one of the world's oldest cities. Not the very top though, but this city dating back to 7,000 BC. We also have an Iranian city and there is an Egyptian one that is a couple thousand years old. Like we said in the very beginning though, there's like different definitions for oldest city. Like Wikipedia has an article called list of oldest continuously inhabited cities, which is a big thing. Egypt also pretty high up there in that case. I love how wholesome Greece and Lebanon's relationship is. It was pretty adorable. As always, if you're not subscribed to PWA, please go do that. Out of all the country ball channels out there, I probably learned the most from this one, actually. Countries scaled by public holidays. Scaled by public holidays, says Switzerland? I could have chosen a better day to turn up. Do you have none or something? Ha! This should be easy for me, says the US. I have so many federal holidays. I'd imagine there's got to be countries in Europe that are way more than we have in the US. Yep, there we go. It's not even in Europe. Looks like there was an Asian one. Uh, Myanmar. Uh, I only have five national holidays this year. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. Even if a holiday lands on a weekend, it isn't moved to a weekday. Oh, Switzerland. Yeah, that's uh, that's weak. Uh, why? UK or the USA can only do puns. I have a huge 11 whole federal holidays this year. That's not that huge, huh? Hee <laughs> hee, good try. I have 12 national holidays this year, says New Zealand. A little bit more than the USA. Workers are entitled to 12 paid public holidays, plus their four-week annual leave. Wow, that's pretty nice. Plus ratio? Bro, thanks Twitter is real life. L plus ratio. I really need to get away. India and, uh, uh, why am I blanking? Sri Lanka. Sorry, like that just like froze my brain for a second. 17 and 25. That's, that's so many. It's like a whole month of public holidays. A gazelle? Uh, a gazette. Uh, it just means the government has mandated it as a national holiday, I see. 
Who's your friend with the sword wielding lion? <laughs> I am Sri Lanka. Oh, I guess I could have just waited for this. Cool. I have 32. That's awesome that they kind of tell you uh, what country and Myanmar. Why? What? This is over a whole month off. Yes, it is. Very good counting. All, uh, all in a holiday's work. Does Myanmar just like tell all their workers, oh, yo, for the whole month of March, you don't chill at home? Or is it actually scattered? Why do I think a country in Europe would have the top spot? So there they are, Myanmar with 32. Nepal is actually at 30. Iran is at 26. So they have New Year's Day and then Independence Day. That's pretty nice back to back. Union Day, Peasants Day, full day of this moon. Oh, a Resistance Day, which is to celebrate the resistance against the Japanese occupation in 1945. Then there's Myanmar New Year holidays, the 10th, 11th. Look, I nailed that. Oh, wait, I thought this was in March. This is in April. I was going to say, I just randomly threw out March as a joke. Um, but yeah, eight days in April, they have uh, New Year holiday celebrations. And it's interesting because it's like all together. They pretty much get like a whole week off or like almost a week and a half. There's also a nice holiday at the end of October and early November. Free full moon day here at the end of November as well. Yo, USA needs to be more like me and Mara. I would love to celebrate more things. Also because I like how much stuff they got going on in the early part of the year. I always feel like the early part, like January to like May are really boring times. There's like spring break in April, but it's like there's really just not a whole lot. Maybe nice if we could celebrate like the moon or something at the end of our year we got all these things october november december so much going on countries scaled by navy size i absolutely love big things as you know usa is easily number one easily i actually heard that the usa has double if you put you have to put everyone's together everyone's navy together and then they something crazy i don't want to say anything but usa's navy's way up there let's see the next closest though china's number two Plus, it only costs about $13 billion to build. Oh, my gosh. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? Battleships? Warships? You definitely warship your navy. And there it is. It's always UK and USA, I feel like, that are doing the puns. Mm-hmm. Spending $13 billion taxpayer dollars on a warship totally makes sense. <laughs> oh, it's an engineering feat. Yeah, yeah, says Japan. But how do you fairly judge the size of one's navy? That's a good question, says India. The number of ships? Maybe. But then that wouldn't would imply that all ships are created equal. Ah, they definitely are not. Yeah, someone could build just a bunch of really small ships. Not the same as having like a bunch of battleships. The amount of water displaced and its cargo? Brilliant. Uh, that sounds a lot fairer. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I agree, says Taiwan. I make the top 10 for tonnage, but not for number of ships. My Navy has an estimated tonnage of 151... 100,000. Sorry, I almost messed that up. Taiwan makes sense. Taiwan's got to protect himself. My Navy has a tonnage of 320,000. I feel cheated, says India. Uh, you chaps are on to something, says UK. UK's... I rank 28 for the number, but my combined tonnage... It's 367,000. Yeah, I figured that's, I mean, that's been the UK's thing for a while. I'm surprised that Japan is above the UK, though. Again, according to this definition, there's d different ways to measure navies. Uh, you can have both, you know, says China. I nearly have 800 ships in my navy, and my combined tonnage is over 700,000 tons. Okay, let's, let's see how huge the USA is. I, in this category, I don't know. When you're measuring navy by, like this... For patrol, my navy has a combined tonnage of nearly 3.5 million tons. Okay, not quite as big as I thought. I knew it was way more than ever. Okay, maybe. Okay, maybe I was right. I thought I heard this crazy statistic that the USA's navy counts for like 50% of the world's navy as a whole. Like if you put everyone together. So this is a common way to measure it by total tonnage. Again, like they were talking about USA way up there. Uh, but according to some sources, technically speaking, China might have more naval assets or just like, what is that? Just boats? Anything that goes in the water? Whereas the US Navy only has 490 naval assets. So Russia is around in the top three and then Japan is pretty high. Little surprised to see India doesn't have a slightly bigger navy. They're probably working on that though. Oh yeah, I heard this. The US US fleet of museum ships alone would make the second largest navy in the world, and that's including the USA. And then a friendly reminder, the two largest air forces in the world are the US Air Force, followed by the US Navy, because navies use planes and stuff as well. Countries compare school hours. Now I have a little bit of research into this, uh, wonder what he's up to. Isn't the US pretty solidly like in the middle in terms of school hours? Hey mate, you all good? Yeah. 
just thinking about how I have the best education in the world. As he, like, stares off into space, he, uh, might actually be right, says New Zealand. It's nearly the end of the summer. You guys ready to go back to school? Oh, no. We're already over halfway in our school year, bro, says the Oceanius, uh, countries. Yeah, mate. That's just wrong. It is wrong. You're supposed to do it after summer. <laughs> and some countries, some places even in the USA, do like one month on, one month off, one month on, one month off. Around 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., give or take 30 minutes. Well, that's completely fair. Oh, boy, Italy. Okay, if anything, it's got to be Italy that's low. 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., but they usually attend a full day on Saturdays. Ooh. Ooh, that... Okay, never mind. I don't, I don't want to be in Italy. I'd rather get all the hours done in as many short days as possible. We go to school 8 a.m. to 3.30. Uh, that's Kenya. The leading country in Africa for education. Well, no wonder. That's a lot of hours. Africa is not a country. Glad we're on the same page. Cool flag, by the way. Thanks. It is a very cool flag. We made primary school free in 2003, increasing attendance by over 40%. Secondary school is also free. Uh, good on ya, Finland. I hope you're not talking about education. Without me, Finland's got a good education. Would they go more or less because it's so snowy? Why sp students pay five, spend five hours in class and they are given little to no homework? A kid's dream. And that is why I will remain the best education system in the world ever. I want no homework. Homework is like the worst thing ever invented. I'd elect to do longer classes, like four hour classes, because I knew those classes didn't give homework. Then they'd be in like a one hour class and then be given a ton of work at home. Because knowing me, I'd procrastinate and I wouldn't do anything until like 11 p.m. at night. No wonder Finland is statistically one of the happiest countries in the world. See, this is a really hard one to measure because there's so many different ways to define it. So in France, the older kids actually get off Wednesday, but they do sometimes have to do a half day on Saturdays. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not doing that. Why am I talking like I have to go to school tomorrow? Chile has the highest average amount of school days worldwide for primary school. Chilean students spend over a thousand hours a year behind a desk. Singapore actually ranks the highest as world's smartest kids, but they also have the most homework, 9.8. Five hours of homework a week? How much is it really, though? I had so many classes say you're going to be doing at least two hours of homework a night for just this class alone. That was always a lie. I kind of made it a challenge. Like, best I can give you is 15 minutes. Country is scaled by lottery jackpots? Do you see that cash raining down? It's jackpot time. Wow, someone is excited. Oh, this is looking like a weird list already. So, who, what country is given the most? I would assume it'd be the USA. The gamble... Let's see how big the USA really is compared to everybody else. Uh, you know that your chances of winning the lottery are slim to none, right? I'm liking those odds. But there must be some decent chance. Everyone knows gamblers always quit their gambling addiction right before they hit it big. You would think so, but yeah. Nah, mate. You have a better chance of being struck by lightning twice in one year than winning the average lottery. What, France? Twice? That would definitely ruin my hairdo. Bloody oath, mate. Definitely not the fry up I'd want. Uh, I, I think I pronounced that horribly. Okay, uh, so, uh, South Africa. How is your lottery? Don't be so rude. You know my name. I don't think America does know South Africa's name. Uh, yes, they're homies. Australia and South Africa. Powerball sure is great. In 2019, someone won 16.4 million US dollars, breaking a new uh, prize record for South Africa. I've heard some insane numbers in the past. Like, everyone's like, oh, you gotta get on this lottery ticket because it's like $500 million or something. Colombia? Uh, a person won $65 million? It was the largest win in South America. Yeah, that's pretty up there. Good on ya. How about Australia? I've got a Powerball too. The largest single win for USA and the Kiwis happened in 2019 uh, for $77 million. Oh, I don't think that's it. Anyways, I'm reading this wrong. Yes, maybe you should just leave China. Didn't know they did lotteries in China. Just cutting in here. Union Lotto takes the cake uh, for Asia. 2012 marked. Yes, yeah, so they're all going to be recent because inflation and things like that. Uh, rookie numbers. You'll be floored by my greatness. Yeah, it's like I think it's like 500 million. Uh, if it helps you sleep at night, sure. 
Comedy gold, says France. After rolling over six times, a single person won 230 million USD through the Euro Millions. This is the largest win in Europe. All right, here it is. It's twice as much. Let's see. Those are rookie numbers. 2018, a single person won 1.5 billion? I thought it was 500 million. Yeah, that's, that is an insane amount. Where was that? And why doesn't that person, like, own half of, like, the country by now? Well, that's, it's only 1.5 billion. Why don't we know? It's a lot of money, and they just disappeared. Yeah, even in the top 10, they are pretty far over 500 million. There was actually two lotteries that won over 1.5 billion. One ticket from South uh, Carolina, and then there was three tickets from California, so they split it. Best way I've ever heard gambling, and thus the lottery described, is it's a tax on people who can't do math. Country scaled by shopping mall size. Where's the best place to shop until you drop? That's right, a mega mall. Who could possibly have the biggest mega malls? That's cute. Uh, sounds like Asia. Looks like Asia is going to be really high up there. I find that hard to believe since I am actually the greatest country and have all the best things. USA has a lot of malls, like dead malls. That's all we... I think USA mostly does online shopping at this point, but maybe there is a place in Asia that's massive. You know how to shop until you, uh, we drop big time. So USA, tell us about your biggest mall. Mall of America? Or is that is that old? Is that like from the 80s? Attractions, restaurants, or stores? Where is it again? It's somewhere in the east, I think. The King of Prussia is my biggest mall. The King of Prussia? I've never heard of that. It was originally built as two buildings in 1963. They've now been combined. It has 259 100 square miles, 259,000, 250, whatever. Not bad, but not great. SM City Fair view is on another level. It has over 700 stores and a gross 300,000 square meters. That's still not that high. How big are these things getting? Siam. Uh, it's a world class. What about Singapore? I actually didn't see the list. I didn't see the balls at the end of the line. 400,000? Iran? What? Uh, okay, so Malaysia, three stages, was finished in 2018. It's our largest and most famous shopping mall with an unbelievable... When they're that big, like, just live there. I would just, like, find a department store to, like, hide in the back. Uh, it's an odd story. The South China Mall is one of the biggest and emptiest malls in the world. Aren't all the malls starting to get a little empty? That's an odd way to describe a shopping mall. It can hold around 2,000 stores, over 2,000 stores, but it's average 10% capacity. Ooh. Oh, you built this huge mall and no one's even going to it. That sounds spooky. It is. You should definitely, like, do some vlogs there. I'm sure there already is. The Ghost Mall, of course. Well, a lot of the buildings in general, those huge skyscrapers are pretty empty, too. This is why China's having all those economic problems, isn't it? Uh, Iran. Because all their buildings are just, like, empty. It's been the world's largest uh, since 2020, with over 2,500 stores. Iran Mall covers an astounding 1.5 million square meters. That is... I need to see this mall right now. How long does that take you to walk through? Like, four days? Gotta love that original and unique name. Okay, yeah, this actually does look like it would take you about four days to walk through. Are all those buildings in the background included, or is that across the street? I think it's across the street. All right, I... Oh, this, that's not a mall. That's like the inside of the Titanic. So I think it's safe to assume that maybe like in Iran, they're not big on online shopping. There's an ice rink, a bowling alley, obviously a huge cinema. It literally opens, I think, during the lockdown. So has anyone ever really been able to enjoy it? It's just like a really fancy, uh, is this just a giant library? There is an aquarium inside of this mall. Again, if you're not already, please go subscribe to PWA. They also have a great series called The Heist, which is really entertaining. And big thanks to- My wife hates this part. My name is Walter Hartwell Wyatt. Drew Cruise, Argentinian the grandpa, Polish, California, Polish, and Nevada bring back Poland balls. The Morton Finish dollars is a lot true. Chris Dickens, Sam Sam Danny, Evan Price, Gamers, Robert Pendleton, Matt Phillips, Ron Jeremy, and Why am I doing this?